All right. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford. And today I have with me Mitchell Simon. Uh, Mitch's experience lies in the coaching and cultivation of high performing leaders, teams, and companies. Uh, his unique skill set stems from 30 years of building leadership curriculum, facilitating leadership and strategy retreats, and coaching executives and their teams to accelerate growth, build team alignment, and generate purposeful cultures. And I'm very clearly reading from an about page. <laughs> you read very well. Yeah, I think I think I know somebody who wrote that. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, Kevin. Pleasure being here. Let's jump right in. Uh, All right. What, what got you into coaching? Well, coming to coaching was great, great question. I was working at Nokia as a as an executive, and I I was on the island of Kona. I bumped into a guy. I'm trying to make this short. Bumped into a guy who was a Tony Robbins coach back in the day. I didn't really know that much about Tony Robbins. He said, "Hey, Mitch, this is 1998. Hey, Mitch, I'm starting a company to take people on life changing adventures." I said, "Nice for you, John." <laughs> and two years later, he actually twisted my arm, convinced me to go on the launch of his, of his company, which was, which was called, it's called Playtime Inc. Okay. And John Chen now is a, is a publisher. I have a book on my shelf. He does a lot of stuff in team building. Hmm. I get to, I get to Seattle to go climb Mount Rainier, which I'd never heard of before. And I find out it's, you know, it's, what is Mount Rainier? Oh, it's the most technical, technical climb in the lower 48 states, which means that people die up there. And I am, he brings with him 12 Tony Robbins coaches and 12 civilians. And these men coaches, you know, approach me and they were like right in my face, like a millimeter nose to nose. Like, how's your life going? How's your marriage going? How's your job going? Is it a 10 out of 10? Oh, really? Why not? What's going on? What are you doing to hold yourself back? Do you know you could prove your life? And I'm like, these guys are, are crazy, <laughs> but I'm really intrigued. And I climbed Mount Rainier. So out of the 24, 11 of us made it to the top. Nobody died. And on the top, I said, you know what? I'm going to be a leadership coach. And then in, of course, not knowing anything about leadership coaching, 2002, Nokia laid off a lot of people post 9-11. Mm. And I, I had a coach at that time. And, and I said, oh my God, I just got fired. And she said, go be a coach. So that was what happened. It was really from that hike up Mount Rainier. That is maybe one of the best origin stories I've heard for a coach so far. Thank you very um, much. I did not make it up. Mountaintop experience. <laughs> it, was a mountain, it was it was a mountaintop. It's you know it really was not the highest mountain in the lower forty eight, but no. pretty darn close. Yeah. And like you said, one of the most technical climbs yeah. in the world and the most technical climb in the country. That's yeah, definitely yeah. the most technical in the country. You you need all the equipment. You need ice axes. You need crampons, lights, ropes and tons of gear and tons of clothes and tons of liquid sugary substances because otherwise you're just going to faint <laughs> portable energy portable energy um, that's it i feel like that i feel like there's a strong metaphor there for coaching but we don't have time to explore that quite so fully maybe maybe next time <laughs> okay let's do next time what are you doing in your coaching business today that's unique or that you would describe as unique or separate from most other coaches you're aware of yeah I, you know, it's, you, it wasn't that, I think it's less unique today, but it's certainly something I never knew about. So I consider myself now a team coach. Hmm. I, I do have one or two clients that I'll do one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, when I started all you coaches out there, when you all start, it's one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> what I find fascinating is the team coaching experience. And to me, that's the ability to work with the team and work on the team dynamics and to treat the team as a being, an entity. And to distinguish between coaching, let's say Joe, who's a CEO versus coaching Joe's team and the dynamics of the team. So there's really no, the, the client is the team. The client isn't Joe or Susie or Sally or, or Ming or, or Han. It's, it's that conglomeration and watching that being in that beast and helping it come alive and helping it build relationships. My passion is in relationships. And my passion is in helping people become transparent and vulnerable and all those big words in, in the team. And why do I do that? Which is the next question. The reason why I do that is because I really believe that teams at work is the last bastion of personal development. Most of us coaches went through a lot of personal development. You know, we're all a little bit crazy. A little bit. <laughs> For those of us who are not as crazy, who are on teams, 
they're not going to go do landmark forum or size seminars or, you know, uh, rich dad, poor dad, or things like that. They're going, and, you know, and, and maybe they'll get some training, but they're not necessarily going to get, let's say personal development. I do think that it's in the, in the nature of being open and honest and having difficult conversations on your team that you're really going to, you're going to really grow personally. And so for me, I like that. I also like the fact that what's also unique about me is I'll work with teams for maybe 10 or 20 years at a time. There are some teams that I worked, I think it was maybe, you know, maybe close to 20 years and I watch them develop. I watch them, you know, I watch the companies, one company I'm working with, I worked with for just three and a half years. We've, we've grown from 30 million to 300 million. There's some, there's some teams I've worked with. They've, the, 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 the gentleman grew from 25 grand a year to 5 million a year. And that, you know, where does that come from? It comes from coaching the team, you know, making the team really, really solid. The other thing that I do that's unique is <clears throat> there's a couple of clients that I work with where I work with the entire company. So be it a hundred person company, a 35 person company, a 200 person company, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm developing curriculum that, that engages different people at different levels. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing quote unquote team coaching, even though it's not a team. As you know, this is the class of what do we call it, like L3 leaders leading leaders. Mm, yeah. I'm treating them as a team because I'm treating that dynamic and I'm going really, really deep, which, you know, I'm basically utilizing Zoom rooms, Zoom breakout rooms like crazy. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> instead of saying, you know, here's an hour of content, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know what? Did you read the book? You didn't? Oh, that's okay. You know what? Here's a question. Go answer this question. Go talk about it. Let's come back. Here's another question. Go talk about it. Let's come back. And what happens is it, it puts people automatically into a uncomfortable position and an uncomfortable conversation. And then they've had that conversation. And once they've had it, then they can go out in the world and, and have conversations like that. It's a really powerful amplifier of all the work. Cause that's, that seems like that would be, and this will lead right into my next question, but it's always it seems like a challenge to make sure that what you're delivering, the work you're delivering, the vulnerability you're promoting radiates out after you're done talking. <laughs> like the work continues. In fact, most of the work happens when you're not around. And it seems like tactics and strategies to trigger or catalyze that kind of change, that kind of growth in a company, that's really, it seems like where the real power is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm with you, Kevin, which is, I don't want to teach subject matter because as we learn in coaching school, learning is not about knowing something. It's about the ability to do something that you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm just going to throw people in the pond and okay, guys, we're going to do this. And they're like, okay. And nobody's died. That seems to be a theme. <laughs> yeah, that's Everyone right. That's dies. the theme. Nobody died. That's good, Kevin. You got that. I like that. What would you say? What would you say your biggest challenge is as a coach right now? For your business, for you personally, what would you say your biggest your biggest hurdle? I like challenge because there are maybe not obstacle, but challenge because it's something that you are working right. through. Right. My biggest challenge right now is expanding my curriculum to the world. And the way I'm overcoming that right now is I I actually created during COVID two online courses. The and the two courses are actually through LinkedIn Learning. There's one course, I have one course on, on virtual accountability and I have one course on being a hybrid manager. I actually last night got my first check from courses. I, I got my first check. I got a hundred dollars, Kevin, a hundred dollars. It was a, it was a ton of work. I'm, I'm keeping my language very, very clean on this podcast. I don't know you, where you you're going. You can get a little off color if you feel yeah. like it'll express. So I'm, it was a lot of work. And I just got my fish hundred dollars because I, I actually, Kevin, I actually had a hundred people throughout the globe take these classes, which is, and the feedback is amazing. And it really feels great because, you know, I'm hearing from people from countries that I can't pronounce that are taking my course. And then, so the challenge right now is instead of doing a course through LinkedIn learning is to do a course on my own and to push it out there. Now, the way I'm, I'm accomplishing this is I actually force myself. This is a great, great, you know, way to grow as a coach is I continuously offer my clients services that I've never done before. 
So it forces me into doing them. And in my last, I have a really great client now up in the Bay area and we're working, I'm working with everyone in the company on building their team, emotional intelligence. And what I've done with that is I've said, Hey, we're going to meet once a month for an hour, each team, like, so each team of 10 people, and I'm, and there's going to be courses online that you'll be able to watch. And we've able to, we've been, we've been using Kajabi so they can watch the courses on their smartphone. Perfect. So the biggest challenge is once we're done with this course is to take that video content and to not only turn it into a course, which it already, already is, it's, it's to actually get it out in the world in a way that people will find it because you know, before this podcast, I didn't know about Kevin Stafford and <laughs> certainly people did not know about Mitch Simon, right? <laughs> well, that's, that's the amplification factor that it's all about. You, you start out like you have one-to-one -one or one to a few, and you have these right. varying size teams up to and including the size of an entire company. But right. then the next step beyond that, you go from one-to-one, one, one to many, one to all. Right. You know? To the because, world. Yeah. To be available, to be available, not just like, cause you can, right. anybody can, you know, click a few things, click a few buttons and be visible on the entire internet, but right. actually being heard, being seen, right. that's, the, that's where the neat, the neat trick is, the challenge is. And there's so many different tools and ways to do it now. And I feel like we're in a, I don't know if I want to call it a boom time, but it certainly does seem like a very powerful moment for that kind of transition. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. Everyone is going online and everyone is, you know, learning. And of course there's lots of changes. So, you know, that's why I've put, I've put a focus on those types of courses that, that are, that are, important right now, you know, virtual accountability, team emotional intelligence is so big right now, especially because teams are not going to be together five days a week. And so how do you, you know, if you're the one lone guy or gal out there, who's not in the office and you want to impact your team and you're not the leader, what do you do? Yeah. So that's you project that, it. projecting yeah, that, emotional intelligence. Cause people rightly think that it's, that's a very internal thing mm -hmm. to reckon with. Right. How do you then, <clears throat> that's where the vulnerability comes in. How do you project right. that and make that available to your team when mm -hmm. you're in seven different time zones Correct. across, you know, mm -hmm. across thousands of miles. Right. And that's a very and most importantly, challenge. most importantly, how do you change the course of your team from mm -hmm. far away? That's the mm -hmm. biggest one. Yeah. So those are my challenges. I'm also writing a book that that's a big challenge and, you know, we're, writing the book proposal right now. And it's it, myself and a, a gentleman who has a, a PhD in all of this emotional intelligence stuff. So we're co-writing it. And that's been a challenge to, you know, for all those coaches out here, you know, we have our business, we have our, you know, our nine to five or nine to nine business, you know, <laughs> seven days a week. And then to also move over to the book and then get, you know, get, get my head down in the book and write it. So other than that, everything's fine, Kevin. <laughs> so the classic challenge, other than only 24 hours in a day, everything right. is fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like we could do this. Speaking of time, I feel like we could talk for hours. I should get started, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the recording here. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. And thanks to our audience of however many. We'll check the numbers later okay. uh, for tuning in today and we'll see you all next time. Well, thanks, Kevin.